Welcome back to the channel, y'all. I'm Scotty G, back at it again. Today we're going to talk about business. It seems like when I do my material, sex and business seems like the most popular topic, so here you go. Just went through the process of forming a new business, and I figured it would be a great little topic to talk about. I had a 20-year career in motorsports, and I ran everything as a business. I retired six years ago, and I retired that business. Well, my son is now running motocross and racing motorcycles, so I decided to go ahead and start back up and run everything as a business again. Um, a lot of benefits to that uh, because it is a profitable business if you do it right. But today, I'm going to talk about nuts and bolts, how you get it done, how long it takes, and what you should do to actually open a business on paper. Okay, we're not talking about brick and mortars here. We're actually talking about what's legal and what you need to do to get it done. First thing you need to do is determine the structure of the business. There's a lot of different entities that you can choose from. Sole proprietorship, LLC, uh, S-Corps. Basically, it depends on really what you what you're looking for, like a sole proprietorship is just going to be some, like a simple one owner business, no partnerships. Uh, partnerships going to be owned by multiple people. An LLC is a limited liability company that honestly is probably going to be the vast majority of people that do it nowadays. Uh, it's a simple business structure, simple taxes, and it, it limits the liability of something if something were to go wrong, they can't come and come after your personal assets. So they can come after your business stuff if something went wrong, but they can't come after your personal, like your home. Okay. So the vast majority are nowadays here in the United States are going to choose an LLC. It's just the way it is. Uh, you know, corporations and all this stuff. Honestly, the vast majority of corporations in this country are small businesses, okay? We're not talking Walmart or Amazon. Uh, they're small businesses. Second step, choose the business name, all right? If you want a catchy title, you got to figure it out. Uh, if you want to do something online, you got to make sure the domain is available. That's probably the first thing you want to do. Uh, but once you find out uh, or you determine the name that you want, you need to look at the secretary of state of the, the state that you live in or the, the state that you're going to file in because uh, you cannot have the same business name as someone else in the in the state. So pretty much every state's going to have a secretary of state uh, website. Look up, say, for instance, if you look, if you live in Iowa, Iowa secretary of state, it'll bring up the, uh, the website and you can put in the search tab saying uh, check business name. If, if there's somebody else that's in the state that's, that has the same name, you cannot have that name. So look it up, find out what you want. Uh, so for instance, I don't get too fancy when it comes to a business like the racing business because I don't plan on going to cup racing or anything like that. It's just uh, it's just something that uh, that's a business, en business entity that I'm not gonna really market that much because uh, you're marketing the racing part of it, not the name. That's not going to bring in uh, sponsorship opportunities. It's going to be results. So uh, your last name, racing, comma, LLC. Okay, that's that's a pretty typical business name. Look it up, see if it's available. If it's available, you can file. Now, in certain states, you can file two different ways. One, you can file electronically, or you can do it by mail, all right? I've had experience with both. I highly recommend doing it by mail because you can have uh, physical copies. Uh, so you have a paper trail of something that you apply for. Sometimes the, uh, the way the internet is, the way the website is, sometimes the electronic way of filing can be a problem. I highly recommend doing it by mail. You'll print out the forms, fill them out, fill them out in detail, make sure everything is all your T's are crossed and your and your I's are dotted uh, because they'll, they'll deny you over just one simple thing. Uh, for instance, this last one, I got denied because I didn't list my wife, which she's a 50-50 owner in all of our, uh, all of, all of our business ventures. 
I didn't list her as a member owner or, uh, excuse me, an, an organizer. Okay. She was signed her name, but she didn't put down organizer on it. Got denied. Sent it back to me. It made the small corrections, faxed it back. Boom. All right. So that's it. Choose your business name, find out if it's available. And then you actually go to the website, get your paper, uh, application, fill it out as best you can. If you have trouble filling that stuff out, an accountant can help you. If you have an accountant or attorney, you can do it that way if you want, but that's expensive. Um, that's up to you. I don't necessarily need that kind of thing. Um, and then you send it in. Then you wait. Okay. When you send something in, especially for the secretary of state, it's going to take about a week or two to hear back from them. They're going to email you because typically they'll, they'll give you the, you'll have to submit your email address and they'll send, send it back to you if there's a problem. Then they'll notify you if you were accepted and they will give you a code. A code, that code will, it's, it's basically for the Secretary of State to recognize your business as an entity. Uh, that is not your tax ID number, okay? That is a code that's available to the public. They're not going to put your, your tax ID number out there to the public. That's a big number. That's what you're looking for. You need that number to own a business. So what you do is you'll get that code and then you file that code back to them or actually back to the, to the government and then you can get your tax id number your tax id number is critical that you need that so that first one you'll get your articles of incorporation that's what i'm talking about that's when they give you that code and then you file again you have to file to get your federal tax id number those two things you need to open a bank account which is the next that's the next step Go to your bank, take your articles of incorporation and your tax ID number certified, uh, and then you open up a, a business account with a with a banker. It usually takes a while. You know, plan on take having it take about an hour to get it done. Uh, depending on the bank that you go, uh, it it takes time. You know, thirty minutes to an hour. Figure in that much. Okay. Now, if you plan on having employees, you have to file. You have to register for taxes. Um, most most people that are going to be listening to this video, typically you're not going to have employees. You're probably just going to go into business with yourself. Um, but if you do that, you have to register for taxes because you have to pay payroll taxes. Okay, um, for those those people, your employees, you're responsible for that. That's every you know every pay period you have to pay pay payroll taxes on that. Okay, they can take your stuff <laughs> if you don't. And after that. You have to obtain uh, certain licenses and permits if you plan on having a service or, or a restaurant, things like that. You need to have a, a permit to actually do business. That's typically with your local government. Uh, you can do it through the state, I believe. Depends on the state, um, but you'll need that. Once you have your bank account in place, your permits, I highly recommend having a, a computerized software to track your expenses and your income. That is very, very important when it comes to tax time when you have your balance sheet. You need your balance sheet to, to show your profit and loss. To have a valid business, to have a valid business, you have to have shown and proof of a profit three out of five years. If you just open up a business and just plan on just doing tax, tax deductions and tax write-offs, you have to show a profit. You have to show that it actually is doing something. That's what they call tax evasion, and they can they can get you for that. So you have to show a profit three out of five years, okay? So to do that, you need to have a balance sheet, and the best way to do that is to do a, like a computer program. I'm a big fan of Quicken. That's, that's everybody's personal preference. Uh, QuickBooks is another very, very popular one. Um, I like Quicken of uh, business and personal. That's the, the, the style because I can track my personal and my business all together, multiple businesses, multiple personal accounts. It's really complicated. So I need, I need one place where I can show all of that. So that's it. So I wish everyone luck with their businesses. I wish everyone a, a happy life. Owning a business is freedom. It really is freedom. You have the choice to do what you want to. Nobody can tell you what to do. Uh, and I highly recommend having your own business.
So there you have it. If you like this content, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And for those who've already subscribed to me, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And until next time, be better than you were yesterday and be desirable.